I'm a feminist, but I changed one of my friend's names in my phone to John Hamm <laughs> as a joke. <laughs> and I haven't changed it back because I like the thrill I get whenever it comes through. <laughs> so I can pretend he's texting me and I'm his girlfriend. I'm a feminist, but the night I got a lift home from a celebrity singer and he asked me if I was single and I said no and he said, your boyfriend's a lucky guy. My first thought was, oh my God, I think this celebrity singer fancies me. <laughs> and my second thought was, Oh my God, this will make a great anecdote. <laughs> and my third thought was, oh my God, I completely forgot my girlfriend is sitting in the back seat watching this exchange. <laughs> and I haven't corrected him. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> Daniel Beddingfield fancies me. <laughs> that will make a great anecdote. Did she up her game after that? Did she be like... She was could... livid. She was like, when were you going to tell him that I was your girlfriend? And I was like, I forgot you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a feminist, but I did much of my research for tonight's show on Cosmo and the rest on BuzzFeed. <laughs> Both great places to find out about periods, to be fair. Fountains of science. Wellsprings of truth. <laughs> I'm a Mont pools of feminism. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jim. I'm a feminist, but I like to pay men to do DIY round my house you know just pay a man <laughs> cash <laughs> to come round to my house <laughs> and fix stuff for me <laughs> so, that's it fella <laughs> you get on your knees and stick your head under my ear bend <laughs> No, don't look at my face. <laughs> you stay down there and I'll tell you when you can get back up again. <laughs> I like to see a man sweat. I said, don't look at my face. <laughs> Leave the money on the side, you can let yourself out. That one might just be me. <laughs> I'm a feminist, but I heard that Justin Trudeau and Margaret Atwood were friends. And I thought, I'd love to be friends with Margaret Atwood, because then she could introduce me to Justin Trudeau. <laughs> oh, you're really not going to like this one. I'm a feminist, but sometimes when my girlfriend legitimately complains to me that I never hang up my coat or put my bag away or that I leave every kitchen cupboard door open when I'm cooking and never, ever close any of them, even after I finish cooking, I find myself making this sound in my head. <laughs> she doesn't know this. She does now. <laughs> Live from King's Place in London, the Spontaneity Shop presents The Guilty Feminists. With me, Deborah Francis White, Jessica Host, Jen Worcester, very special guests, Jim McKenney, Amica George, Grace Campbell, talking about period poverty. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and the hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. <laughs> All right, well, today we're talking about period poverty. Uh, now, we've discussed periods on this podcast before, twice, but there are lots of women in this country, and girls in this country, 
who cannot afford sanitary products. Um, there's a genuine poverty. So that's what we are discussing uh, today. Before we get our fabulous guests on, do you enjoy... A period? A period. <laughs> I think I might be one of the many women who doesn't really enjoy them that much. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I think? I think it's a real flaw in the system. It's such a waste. Because most people would only have, like, one or two babies in a lifetime, some three. And in olden times, of course, people had more, but they often died they having them. They didn't want them, though. No, they didn't want them. <laughs> oh, another one. Oh, God. But, but even if you would, could have six children in a lifetime, as some people did, or even, you know, nine or ten, that's a lot of periods to get through. It's like, why waste every single month you have a potential baby, when even though you just... Surely there's a Just better a little system. button here, you go, yeah, period time. Yeah, a and better... some of us would never press that button. Exactly. <laughs> a better system would be if you wanted to ovulate, you turned something on. You know, like the thermostat at home. You know, when you want your central heating, you turn it on. I see what you mean. Or like, you know, when you get like a box of wine. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that's a slightly better... <laughs> you know, because it's in a bag and... Exactly like a box of wine. So if you've got but a box of wine... if you take the bag out of the box, then you kind of... Look, let's move this forward. <laughs> let's trip it on. Let's move it on. OK. Also tonight, we must say, if we are talking about men, we are talking about cis men. Trans men get periods. And it's often very, very difficult. And I did some research. We did book a trans man to come on the panel this evening. And unfortunately, uh, he had to cancel. So just to say, we understand that this is an issue for women and trans men. And one of the big points that uh, he wanted to make was when everything says feminine hygiene product, it's kind of embarrassing to go in and go, oh, I have to get something that's feminine. And if there could be some change in the labelling, that would be very useful. But also, there are no bins for tampons and pads in men's rooms. And there's arguments there about non-binary loos or having at least bins in men's loos, that kind of thing. So there are issues there. When we talk about men tonight, we are talking about cis men, if we are discussing men in that way. So I just wanted to say that at the outset and at the top... the fabulous, the only, Jen Brezza. Okay, so there's a rule, there's a rule in comedy that women must never, ever, ever mention their period, okay? This rule was told to me when I first started stand-up comedy by everybody in comedy, including women, because we all know that women are barely funny anyway. <laughs> God forbid that they should mention anything like their periods. Because <laughs> that's not very funny. And when people told me this, I went, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> periods aren't funny. I mean, that's just ridiculous. How awful of any woman to mention she has a period. How hack. <laughs> and all of us women agreed never to mention it again. <laughs> because, of course... If men had periods, they wouldn't mention them, would they? <laughs> I mean, why would we mention a monthly cycle where we bleed, experience pain, mood swings, and on occasion, we can actually be hospitalised? No, we shouldn't mention anything as hack as periods. But do carry on chatting about wanking and how embarrassing it is to get an unwanted erection at work because everybody needs to hear about that. <laughs> I'll just pretend like I'm Barbie and it's all smooth down there and there's nothing to see here. Can you imagine how much stand-up comedy there would be from men if they had to stick a tampon up their ass once a month? <laughs> they do if they just have to stick one cotton bud down their knob? Do you know what I mean? They're like absolutely, absolutely losing it. You try squeezing a human being out of a hole the size of a ten pence piece, mate, and then get back to me. Get a fucking grip. Anyone would think you'd, be, you'd experience having a cervical smear done by an, uh, a trainee nurse who'd forgotten her contact lenses. <laughs> yeah, I'm having, I'm just having a little bit of trouble finding it here. <laughs> I think, no, I, I just... Is it here? <laughs> I think it might have moved. <laughs> I'm 
not surprised, love, the way you're stabbing away down there. It's probably hiding. <laughs> you can also bet your ass that if men had periods, sanitary bum pads would not only be free, but they would be freely available everywhere. You know, oh, hello, mate, can I get a pint, please? Yeah, and uh, I'm on the blob. <laughs> so I'll have some of them sanitary bum pads and a, and a packet of up the bummers. I'm playing squash later and I don't want any rubbish between the cheeks, know what I mean? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Men are terrified of periods, aren't they? Just mention to a group of men that you're, you've got your period. They absolutely they don't know where to look, do they? They, they don't know what to do with themselves. And, and like, I think this is what we should do. The next time you have your period, yeah, and you're asked by a friend or a colleague or a boyfriend or a husband, and they ask you how you are, instead of saying, Oh, I'm fine. Thanks, love. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. I feel bloated, mate. I feel bloated. I've got horrific period pains. I can actually feel them across my back and down the front of my thighs. I feel so moody that while I talk to you, I'm also fantasising about punching you in the face. <laughs> Or having a cry whilst cramming a family sized fruit and nut bar in my gob. I also feel a lot hornier than usual while simultaneously disgusted with my body for no reason whatsoever. Other than the fact that I've been told having a period is disgusting by everyone, including companies who want to sell me sanitary products, but want me to believe that having blue liquid pouring out of my vag <laughs> is preferable to actual human blood. <laughs> anyway, how are you? <laughs> I don't think it's a controversial idea, is it, that essentials such as sanitary products should be absolutely free? You know, for all women, but particularly for any woman who can't afford to buy them. Personally, I'd love them to be free so we could stop having all of those patronising adverts. Even adverts that don't even seem to be about periods seem to be hinting at periods. <laughs> remember those yoghurt ones? <laughs> Do you remember those yoghurt I just feel really bloated. <laughs> what the fuck's the matter with you? If you're not on your period, why are you bloated? Have a yoghurt, darling. Have a yoghurt. <laughs> no, don't have a yoghurt. Have a shit. <laughs> it's just that those patronising adverts where women are always roller skating. Do you remember those? Because women were constantly roller skating. Roller skates? No, neither have I since I was nine. Because roller skating is about as much fun as having your period. There's nothing empowering about roller skating. Roller skating is fucking shit. Do you know what I'd like to see? A body form or one of those Tampax adverts, I'd like to see one of those where instead of them roller skating or bounding around on a fucking lilo, I want to see a woman just walking down the street minding her own business and a bloke comes along and tries to mug her. And then you just, it's just two and a half minutes of seeing this bloke being beaten round the head with a handbag. Because <laughs> she's on her period and you don't fuck with June when she's on a rag. Yeah? <laughs> and the tagline would be, oh! Don't fuck with us. We'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say, I don't reckon there's that many comedians who could write stand up and have never performed it before, read it off a page and make it that good. <laughs> Most of the stand-up comedians you know on the television are, of course, men ones. Um, <laughs> because they think men ones are better. And I know from doing this show, week in, week out, with a variety of extraordinary female stand-up comics that get to co-host on this, or we invite to co-host on this, Fuck me, there are some good woman ones. Oh my God, absolutely amazing. I just thought that was incredible. I just don't know... 
I just, no, I do know that most of the guys that you see on those panel shows could not do that and also wouldn't. Would go, oh, no, 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 I'll have to do it. I wouldn't be able, just wouldn't be able to do it. They just would refuse to do it. Women take all opportunities because so few are afforded to us. <laughs> okay. But you will soon be seeing Jen Brister on Live at the Apollo because Jen Bristow did Live at the Apollo. Tonight she's live at King's Place. You were Live at the Apollo. It was amazing. It was amazing. Did you also write something specially for the night and read it? Off the A4, just go out. I'd love to see you do that and live at the Apollo. Go, just just knock this just up backstage. Knock this, knock this up. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Fuck you, live at the Apollo. I, I, I'm not brave enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is just something I knocked up two minutes ago. Let's see how this works. <laughs> That's right. I can't wait to see it. When's it out? It's out on the 14th of December. So, wow. Really? Yeah. We don't have to wait at all. You don't have to wait. 14th of December. Fact, everyone watch it. Yes. Everyone at home listening, if you live in the UK, Jen Brister is on live at the Apollo. It is on your television set on a television set, because it's 1952. <laughs> it's on your televisual set, on the new craze that all the kids are getting into, down with the kids, the television. <laughs> and you can see- It will be in black and white. You can see Jennifer Bristop telling some jokes into a microphone. <laughs> I've got a lot of makeup on. So if you're looking at me going, I saw a guilty feminist, to be honest, she doesn't look like that. I don't. No. They make you do makeup, yeah, they put you into a... What they do is they say, come in for makeup, and you go, um, but I'm not on stage for five and a half hours. And they go, no, no, we just put the first layer on. <laughs> and then you go in every hour, and that's why I look closer to you than I am. <laughs> just a layer and layer of foundation. I mean, I look all right. Yeah. With that much makeup. You look fabulous now without any. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like that was, I, I fished for that and I absolutely did. So well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you very um, much. My challenge was to spend a whole period as if I could not afford sanitary products and just using loo paper. And I would not recommend it. Mm. It's very uh, scratchy. You feel very insecure about it coming through onto your clothes. And it's generally kind of messy. And it does put you off going out. I will have to say that. And it puts you off wearing certain sorts of clothes. You have to think much more carefully. And also, often when you go to the loo, it just kind of falls out. And you have to go again. Down your trouser leg. Well, just generally, it's just not the right equipment for the job. So that was my challenge. Because I wanted to uh, experience what we were going to be talking about tonight. So shall we get our guests on? Yes, let's do it. Okay. Our guests today are first a radio presenter and fashion stylist, as well as an award-winning documentary maker, Gemma Kearney. <laughs> she is joined by teenage activist Amica George and co-founder of the Pink Protest, Grace Campbell. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, uh, Gemma, Grace, and Amica, tell us about period poverty and how this began. So, the campaign started when I read about period poverty in the news earlier this year. Um, I was just kind of eating breakfast before school, and I saw that girls in the UK were missing school for up to a week every month just because they couldn't afford menstrual products. Or they were going to school using, like you mentioned, toilet paper, socks, newspaper, the sleeves of old t-shirts. It was really horrifying and it's something that I'd never been faced with and I just was completely gobsmacked and I felt I had to do something about it. So I started a campaign, I started a petition on change.org. I called it hashtag free periods and the idea is to provide free menstrual products with, to all people on free school meals. Wonderful, that is a wonderful thing to do. Amika, you're, you're only a teenager, and this is a serious piece of activism to be doing. Do you think it's because you're a teenager that you relate to the problems with teenagers? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I know that when I miss just one day of school because of illness or for whatever reason, I have an insane amount to catch up on, um, especially kind of doing your A-levels or your GCSEs. It's so intense. So when I heard about girls my age missing a week or over a week every month, which is obviously a huge amount of time in the long run, I just couldn't believe it. 
Yeah, it's an extraordinary thing. And what are you doing about it? There's a protest coming up. Yeah, so we've got a protest on the 20th of December in London on Parliament Square. And Grace is helping me organise it. It should be a really good time. We're all wearing red and we've got some really cool speakers organised. So, yeah, please come along if you can. Everyone here, come. <laughs> I am going to come. No excuse. Um, I'm going to be there and I'm very, very excited about it. So we'll have a guilty feminist area that you can come and find us. And Grace, can you tell me a little bit about how your organisation fits in with this? So I started the pink protest quite recently with someone called Scarlett Curtis, who's a good friend of mine. The idea was to redefine what young female activism is like, because we felt that a lot of older people think young people are quite apathetic now. And we also felt that loads of young people are activists. They just had never called themselves one because it's kind of a word that I think has started to seem quite, I don't know about uncool, but like people just don't use it that much. So we were making a short film and Amica came to the shoot to talk about free periods and we like obviously fell in love with her and have started helping her since then. And now, yeah, we're working on the campaign and we're helping her organise the protest. So you're a sort of umbrella project yeah. to bring female activists together and get each other cross-fertilising on each other's protests and each other's projects. Basically, and also I'm a filmmaker and it, the idea is that we create video content for social media to kind of engage people across all sort of boards of activism. And we're really enjoying at the moment bringing loads of different parts of female activism together because mm -hmm. it's like educating us so much and like there's so much incredible activism going on at the moment that I hadn't really known about until I started this so it's just been really really inspiring and like meeting someone like Amica who like at your age I was literally just getting drunk on Hampstead Heath so it's no. incredibly inspiring <laughs> how old are you how old are you Amica oh, I'm 18 you're 18 yeah well done on not being drunk on Hampstead Heath right now. Uh, <laughs> some good work. I had a Cambridge yeah. interview on Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've got an interview coming up. So, um, um, so you can't be drunk on Hampstead Heath yet? Unfortunately not. No, no. But, you know, <laughs> plenty it's, of time. It's plenty of time. And <laughs> December, after, after the March 18. on December the 20th, we might yeah. go for a few. Yeah. We've actually got a bar in central London called, I think it's called Hello Josephine. Because I will, I'll try and remember the actual name of it who are offering uh, happy hour cocktails to everyone that's on their periods in around the time of the... <laughs> I'll definitely I'm be on, on my I'm period. On. I'm on all the time. When you get to my age, you're always on. You're just on. <laughs> and Gemma, you're an amazing writer and broadcaster, and you've got a book that's actually got a chapter about periods, hasn't it? Yeah, so I wrote a book called Open, a toolkit for how magic and messed up life can be. And it goes from your heart, your mind, your body and soul, your world and your future. And when I was writing about your body and I was writing it from a female perspective because I'm born female but I don't think that the book is just for girls mm. you know I fought with my publisher for it not to be pink for example it's yellow it's got to be genderless because I feel like we're living in a genderless society more so but I did want to write about periods and sort of explore like why they're such a taboo and like, the more I wrote about them the more I got like mm. just sort of enlightened and angry and um, I just couldn't stop I couldn't stop thinking about them because they're so powerful and unfortunately so problematic too. And I think what would be really nice, like you talking about this incredible march that you guys are doing and all the stuff that you're doing is just like, this sounds patronising, but I think young people are just the best people on the planet right now. Like the younger generation are just absolutely keeping me like afloat in terms of I think you you know the future is bright. So well done. I just would love there to be loads of guys like in red because it's just really important that like we're all here because of periods so why why don't guys want to talk about them too they really don't <laughs> they just don't <laughs> i mean i've tried i know it's so weird have you, ever, have you ever just accident have you been talking to her like um, I, I, this happened to me a friend of mine who i write with who's really cool he's totally fine with the period thing <laughs> but then i just sort of went because you know it's really heavy today and he went okay enough yeah. <laughs> and i was like well, now I want to tell you everything. No. <laughs> There's a big taboo about it, and I think it's great to get us talking about it more because if you are experiencing period poverty, if you can't afford tampons and you're going to school or missing school because of periods and it seems like a taboo subject you're much less likely to speak up and go hey I can't afford tampons and I'm in the middle of my GCSEs someone needs to help me how important do you think discussions and you know Gemma talking about it on the radio or in her book or how important do you think it is Amica? I think it's the most important thing I think I have never really understood why I completely 
normal, natural process that obviously the half the world's population go through every month is so embarrassing and we're so scared to talk about it and it makes it so much harder because we just can't seem to dismantle this period to boot. Um, and I completely agree. I think that men need to be involved in the conversation. I think um, at the moment we have this perception that, you know, periods obviously only a women's issue, so only women can talk about them. And that stops men from getting involved and that stops us from getting over this embarrassment. And um, like you mentioned before, I think that sanitary product manufacturers should really be held responsible for a lot of it. I think that mm. they have these adverts with the, you know, the blue liquid falling from the skies. They have, <laughs> they have you know, women on their periods parachuting and, you know, rock climbing, <laughs> wearing white hot pants, and it's completely unrealistic. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even off your period, that's a dangerous <laughs> yeah. choice, isn't it? White, hot, white pants hot pants in any situation is just a no-no. Yeah. It's true, it's true. They're always running... Women only run in ads if they're on their period. Yeah. You don't see women running under any other circumstances unless it's one of those ads that says, you can be as good as a man. There's some ads like that that are like, you know, like this girl can type ads, which are great. Mm -hmm. But other than that, if women are running, it's definitely because they're menstruating. I'm like, well, how much running do you do Did when you, you run a period? Did you see um, the, the story of the woman who ran the marathon was free bleeding? Mm. Mm. I can't remember her name. I, uh, she's no, incredible. And yeah, so she was just like, you know, I've worked for months towards this goal I'm on my period and if I have to stop to change my tampon or whatever it's going to stop the actual event it's going to be more time so she just let herself bleed I just <laughs> I, 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 I'm I, just thinking I'm, of the practicalities of the you know because it will get moist and rubbish again it's you know? fascinating I, just, I know because there's period imagine. pants you can buy now can't you yeah, I think yes. Facebook has told yeah. me about these yeah. Yeah. relentlessly Ashling B is such a big advocate for them she's, she's like, told me about oh, them oh has she well, yeah. so you buy and then presumably you buy, you buy these period pants and then you obviously you have your period and then you wash them and then use them again? Is yeah, you wash them and you just have to run water at the time, but then you can leave them in the wash like anything else. And even environmentally, that's another thing that I started to think I'm down about with that. a lot when I was writing about them. And I was like, all the waste that we're putting into the earth because yeah. of our periods, it's kind of like, we need to find a better way of doing this. Because I wasn't too... I thought the moon cup, that wasn't really me. Yeah, no, so... Do, do you know what I mean? I was like, I don't want to go into a public yeah, sink I did and just go, it. don't mind me, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> What is she doing? It's just <laughs> menstruation. It's just menstrual blood. It feels really Game of Thrones to me when you take it out. I've tried it as a challenge for the show in the past, and it feels like, my cup runneth <laughs> over. It's like a goblet of blood. And I'm just like, oh, or, or no. And I know that they are more environmentally friendly, but I rather think the Thinks pants are maybe the thing, or increasingly, um, my birth... <laughs> you, there's a I'm lady sure. there shouting for a moon cup. <laughs> oh, li no, listen. I think moon cups are absolutely great. I just, for me... Mm. No, I, yeah, for others. Yeah, <laughs> no. Do you know what just I mean? give us a cheer if you enjoy a moon cup. <laughs> oh, give wow. us a cheer if moon cups are not for you, but you would consider thinks the pants that you wash. <laughs> Right. Yeah, because there's practical reasons. I feel like I need to defend myself here. No, no, As a stand-up comedian, I'm on the road a lot, and there's a lot of public toilets where I have to come out of yeah. and go, hello. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm not confident, loo, but I'm not... Do maybe you not, then you've got to rinse it out. I'm not going to, like, literally come out with a cup. But, I mean, you just still, you're going to have to, like... I suppose you could flush and rinse it. Look, anyway, <laughs> the thing is... There are a lot of... But then you've got to queue for the loo again to put it back in, I suppose. <laughs> So if oh, you're right, and I don't want to put it in flushed water and then go, I hope this is... <laughs> no, not clean. flushed water. No, but this is all going on in... I'm having no, a... I'm imagining, I feel like I'm having a breakdown. I'm imagining... <laughs> I'm imagining you're in Debenhams, you've queued for the loo, it's Christmas shopping, you've queued for the loo... I like the way you're in Debenhams, I'm in some, like, shitty <laughs> shell station. Yeah, little chef, chef off the M40. I, I feel like you're Christmas shopping in Debenhams, you queue for the loo, you think, oh, bloody hell, and I've got all my parcels, but I really need the loo. You queue for the loo, you pull your moon cup out, you tip it into the loo, you get out, you wash it in the sink, then you've got to go back to the queue to put it back in. But in the meantime, you are in fact free bleeding, which I know is all the rage, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Much like moon cups, not for me, gang. And I, I'm just not a free bleeder, and I think I'm a feminist, but I'm not a free bleeder and never will be. But similarly with the moon cup, it is that kind of thing that you then you come out, then you have to rinse, then you have to queue up again, and then what's going on in the meantime? It's great for your house, but... 
Oh, we're, we're being Oh, you use a water bottle. <laughs> no. Oh, that Thank makes you. more sense. Okay. I was like, like how does okay, this work? Okay, but here I am. Do you know how clumsy I am? I'm standing over the Debenhams loo. I've got a water bottle. I've tipped it out, and now I'm trying to tip water, and then I drop it in the loo, and then it's Do you know, all... also, I'll have left the car, and I've gone into the service station and gone, where's the water bottle? That's the kind of thing I do. Look, I don't... I know, we could workshop this, but we've only got 15 minutes. <laughs> Please welcome the wonderful Deborah Francis White. <laughs> this is 17 things you probably didn't know about periods, but should. One, in Turkey, the slang for menstruation is the motherland is crying blood. <laughs> Two, before her mission in 1983, NASA engineers asked Sally Ride if she would need 100 tampons for the week of her period <laughs> in space. <laughs> she replied, no, that would not be the right number. <laughs> According to a 2002 interview published by NASA, yes, they published that <laughs> on purpose. They said, we're meant to be the cleverest people in the world. This is how stupid we are. <sighs> in Spain and many Spanish-speaking South American countries, they say... Andres, el que viene cada mes. A rhyme that means... I'm with Andrew, the one that comes once a month. <laughs> it's the slang for menstruation. In 1921, women paid for the first disposable Kotex pads by putting money in a secret box on the shop counter and having a secret parcel slid across to them like they were in a spy film. Because <laughs> they were available but not to be discussed. In Austria, Germany, Latvia, Norway, and Switzerland, they call it Strawberry Week. <laughs> Most women have period stains in every pair of underwear. 36,000 women surveyed by Thinks. <laughs> That's a lot of women for a survey. They don't normally bother with that many. They normally do, you know, with the skin creams. They say we asked 96 women and 72 of them said they thought they could see a change if they looked really closely. Ooh, it works. But this is 36,000 women surveyed by Thinks, and 54% said they'd ruined every pair of underwear they owned due to their period. <laughs> now, on the Guilty Feminist, we like to do an mmm. Never close their eyes, just say mmm if you've ruined a lot of underwear. Go. Mmm mm, if you've ruined no underwear. <laughs> in Denmark, Estonia, and Sweden, they say the communists are in the funhouse. <laughs> because it's red down there in the fun house. <laughs> A rare menstruating disorder can cause bleeding of the eyes. Mm. Known as vicarious menstruation. Luckily, only a handful of cases have been recorded and the condition occurs when endometrial tissue, which normally grows in your uterus and sheds during your period, is transmitted through the bloodstream. I know. Vicarious menstruation. <laughs> Also, I think what my husband experiences at times. <laughs> In Belgium, Canada, and France, they say, the British have landed. <laughs> they must be pleased about Brexit. <laughs> Humans, humpback whales, and elephants are the only animals that go through menopause. <laughs> In the Czech Republic and Slovakia, they say, I've got a pile of old useless junk. That's probably the most accurate one. You know, <laughs> pile of old useless junk. In the Middle Ages, people thought red-headed people were conceived during a period. <laughs> in South Africa, they say, Granny is coming in the red car. <laughs> 
The first movie to use the word vagina was 1946 animated film made by Walt Disney called The Story of Menstruation. It's true, it was funded by a company. You can see it online. It's hilarious. I mean, it's not, but it is. It's basically, think about the Sorcerer's Apprentice, you know, in uh, Fantasia. It's that, only with menstruation. Tampon is a French word. Does anyone know what it means? Plug, correct. Yeah, absolutely. Tampon. So if you have a bath plug, it is also called tampon. Tampon. Any French people in? Do you use it for both the bath plug and the plug? No French people in. Well, in that case, no one will be able to refute this. In France, they say, the little clown with the bleeding nose. Many women do not realise that because women menstruate earlier, give birth later, have fewer pregnancies, spend less time breastfeeding, and enter menopause later, they can expect far more periods in their lifetime than women in prehistoric times. A woman in an industrial country can expect 450 periods in her life. Count them down, sisters. Count them down. <laughs> but what I find interesting, I wanted to ask you, because obviously you're campaigning with the companies that produce sanitary products. Are they any close to saying, do you know what, we, because even if you know, in this great neoliberal capitalist society we live in that we think, okay, businesses deserve to you know, make money and we can't have these uh, sanitary products available to everybody, surely there should be a place where women can go if they can't afford sanitary products and they go, you know, let me give away free condoms, you know. Someone, I had a bloke say to me, went, why should, uh, should you get, sen- you know, I have to pay for my toilet paper. I was like, well, you, no, you don't. <laughs> When was the last time you went into a restaurant and they went, that'll be 35 pence? <laughs> <laughs> and also, have you noticed if you go into any sort of public toilet, if you want to buy a tampon or something, it's four pounds each or something. It's something ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, what's the deal with these guys? I'm assuming they're guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree. I think, obviously, condoms are free. They're not... It's the same principle with pads and tampons. They are... For us, they're necessary and we need them and the girls who don't have them are suffering. I think for the women who are, you know, asylum seekers, refugees or homeless, they are now being provided at food banks, which is amazing, but a lot of people don't know that they are there. And also, obviously, because of the taboo, they're too embarrassed to ask. So I think it really all does come down to this taboo that we need to smash. And in terms of sustainability, would you like the government to provide more moon cup slash think pants and get away from tampons? Or right now it's just more important that girls get to go to school and would you prefer them just to make tampons freely available from the school? I think um, the thing with moon cups, as we said, is that obviously so amazing for the environment, much, much better, but there is a problem with education around them that not all girls have heard of them, not all girls know how to use them. And so I think there needs to be a range because I do think that obviously girls, we're all different. We all have different periods and we have different preferences. So if this is implemented, which I really, really hope it does, I think it should be a variety. And also that we learn more about it in schools. Mm. That's a real problem because it's the same as sex education. It's like all of that. I just didn't really get while I was at school. It just wasn't taught about periods and sex. No, me neither. Nothing. Like nothing. So I think that's another big problem. And that's also a big root of the taboo and the stigma Mm. is that in schools, it's not like an open conversation to talk about your periods and it's not encouraged. How do we get girls to be in a situation where they're at school and they don't have to ask? Because I think the asking is the humiliating bit. Is there a way that girls can be offered and that there's just an access so that you know if you go to that store cupboard you can get what you need, rather than having to go cap in hand and go, please, can I have a... You know, because it's embarrassing not being able to afford things and you don't want to have to ask for them. Or you may need to stock up before you get your period because you wake up and you've got it and now you've got to get into school. I think my idea is that... So you might have heard that there's a pilot scheme that was launched in Scotland um, over the year and the way it worked there is that women from lowest income families or backgrounds, they were provided with an S card. So that's just a small, kind of very subtle, discreet card that they could just show at... So girls could show them at school Mm. or in a supermarket, pharmacy, wherever. And it was just so kind of discreet and not embarrassing that it wasn't a big kind of... Because obviously, it's, like you said, it's a completely humiliating to put your hand up and say, you know, this is me. And especially for women and girls all over the country, they shouldn't have 
have that barrier every single month. So I do think it should be something subtle like an S card or just something that kind of gets rid of this humiliation. How much funding do you need from the government to make this happen? So we've done some kind of crude costs and obviously it does vary hugely on the, whether you go for the higher scale or the lower scale of products or kind of which products you use, but the estimate is around £5 million annually, which kind of in the grand scheme of things for the government isn't a huge amount of money, especially if it's putting you know, thousands of girls back in schools and giving them back their education, which obviously we all need and deserve. Yeah, and also the future of the country, the investment in young people is always, exactly. always worthwhile. And given the price tag of Brexit, it really isn't mm. very much by comparison. We could just take some of that 350 million a year bus money <laughs> that we were going to get. <laughs> Do we have any questions from the audience? Yes? Hello. Um, Hi. In relation to the scheme you're trying to work up, wouldn't it be worth asking the government to use the taxes that we pay for uh, tampons and pads and all the sanitary items to use that for the scheme. Yeah. Yeah. That would be ideal. Yeah, that... <laughs> Philip Hammond, where are you? I would like them to cancel that, though. I would yeah. like them to... That's a tricky one, because then they'll say, oh, yeah, we're using it for good things. But given they are still taxing tampons, is that a way that you can pressure them? Completely. I think that was, you know, the ideal solution. I think that's where it lies. The tax on tampons is, I think, the most ridiculous thing. Um, I read that Jaffa cakes are considered an essential, <laughs> necessary item for the British population, so we don't pay tax on them. But tampons and pads are a luxury. So we should all just start using Jaffa cakes. Yeah. Really. <laughs> They're really absorbent. I don't know if you've heard. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody else got a question? Yes, somebody there? So the campaign's amazing, well done. But I guess I would pose a question of, is not a significant part of the problem eradicating the taboo around poverty as well? Yes. Yeah, yes. Oh, but, I mean, yes. definitely, but it's one of the stages, I guess, in getting closer towards that. Obviously, that's a goal. But this is kind of a really small ask for the government, this. So it actually could be achieved really quickly, and then it could be a kind of a stage... I'm really interested to know what is actually happening, like the communication that you're having and whether yeah. you're seeing a sort of light or whether you're yeah. still... Yeah, I mean, there, there's been a great engagement with yeah. loads of politicians and we've got quite a few MPs speaking at the protest and the idea is that the protest will kind of really grab, like, the Cabinet's attention because at the moment we're talking to shadow Cabinet ministers and backbenchers, but there is... I mean, we're making progress. The, the goal is in the new year to sit down with, like, Justine Greening or Philip Hammond and really try and talk to them. Amazing. He seems like a kind of guy you could really... Yeah. <laughs> communicate yeah. about your heavy Sweet. flow. Yeah. <laughs> That's my dream. But yeah, really enjoying <laughs> this heavy flow, Phil. <laughs> Are you feeling it, man? I will stop talking about my flow when you fund my project. <laughs> That's what we should just do, just write in about our flow. In fact, Gronya Maguire was doing that, wasn't she? She was constantly <laughs> yes. writing in to Irish politicians about her, the content of her period until they... <laughs> and it maybe, is, it maybe is a really, really good strategy. Mm. It's just... Uh, yeah, bleed just keep all sending over in House photos of, of it. We'll free bleed in the House of Commons until you... <laughs> it was five million. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the question was a really good one. You know, we should be trying to eradicate poverty and not just sort of providing charitable options for people who are too poor to afford tampons. But at the same time, Amica being only 18, she probably can't eradicate poverty. <laughs> but, I can she, try. but she can... This is something that she's seen, it's a need, and it's something that could be done tomorrow if the government would stump up for it. And then that's something local in her world that's fixed to yeah. her age group. And I do... I am increasingly thinking, we get frustrated that we can't fix the world and some things seem to be getting much worse and some things seem to be getting much better historically. But the things that are getting much worse, when we feel overwhelmed and frustrated by them, one local thing that we can do, one person we can reach out to. Online I've seen an idea that if you've got a spare old handbag or something or a canvas bag that you're not using, to fill it with tampons and, or sanitary napkins and other you know, healthy snacks and uh, healthy snacks, snacks and other things <laughs> and give it to a homeless woman. What can you do locally while we continue to try and turn around the oil tanker that is some of these governments that we now are living with? Shall 
we do our charity of the week. What is your charity? Please tell us. Um, we're women in prison. The vast majority of women in prison have experienced a domestic violence, mental ill health, addiction and childhood trauma. A third grew up in care and one in two leave prison homeless. Most are there for non-violent offences, often linked to poverty, including shoplifting and not paying TV licence or council tax. When a mother is sent to prison, nine out of ten children have to leave their home to go into care or live with relatives. Women in Prison is a national charity founded 30 years ago by a woman in Holloway. We work in prisons and communities to help women survive abuse, find a safe place to live, cope with mental ill health and combat addiction. We're campaigning to half the women's prison population from 4,000 to 2020 by 2020 by donating just £5 a month through our website, www.womeninprison.org.uk. You'll help the most disadvantaged women get their lives on track, be part of a social justice mission and make a real difference. Follow us on Twitter at whip underscore live. Thanks very much. Tonight, we'll be collecting at both doors for women in prison. If you come tonight, you've paid for your ticket. There's no obligation to give. But if you've got a pound, a fiver, a tenner that you're not using in your bag, if you could pop it in, that would be amazing. Anything you've got would be so gratefully received. If you're listening at home and you haven't paid for the show, if you could pop something in their website, that would be much appreciated. Also, how can we give to you guys? How can we help? What can we do? So you can sign the petition. It's hashtag free periods, change.org. Come to the protests on the 20th of December. Write to Justine Greening and ask her to take period poverty seriously. Or Anything else? Just or tweet her. It's at Justine Greening MP, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But like we were talking about, I think more than anything, just talk about periods. Just do something. Just on the bus. That'll be yeah. To the bus driver. Just, mm-hmm. kind of, <laughs> <laughs> just kind of, I think, just go into detail, be graphic. Um, <laughs> because that's the only way that we can kind of teach the next generation that periods aren't embarrassing and they're not disgusting. They're powerful. Mm. They are. <laughs> Just loudly say to the bus driver, Granny is coming in the red car. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I like the way he looks at me. Jen Brister, do you have anything to plug? Well, we've done the Apollo, haven't we? So, live the Apollo on December the 14th. I am also doing a charity gig at the Bill Murray on the 6th of February for a period charity. (laughs) And I can't remember the name (laughs) but it's for for exactly the same thing to raise money for women primarily refugees but for women who are unable to afford periody stuff and uh, i think it'll be on the bill murray website which is in uh, angel and you can find it there 6th of february perfect 6th of february go and see jen brister Gemma kenny can you plug your book please yes because my heart and soul is in my book so all my secrets are there you should ask your local bookshop if they haven't got one, why they haven't got one. Um, <laughs> seriously. Um, it took me a long time to write and I cried a lot, so do ask. Um, What's it called? It's called Open, a toolkit for how magic and messed up life can be. It's value for money. It weighs over a kilogram, so if you don't like it, you can use it as a weight. Um, <laughs> and it's bright yellow. You can't miss it. It's got my gob on the front of it, even though I didn't want to be on it. They made me. And it's got glitter. It's full colour. Buy it for someone for Christmas, especially if they're... 14 and having a terrible time but also read it yourself because it's for everybody Um, where can we buy it and you can go online so it's got its own website open the book dot xyz and choose which outlet you want to give your money to that's up to you ideally not amazon but they're so good for christmas something because they just send it (laughs) wrapped always turns up so annoying though i don't know supporting them it's hard please try and buy it from waterstones or an independent please 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 Amazon, I hate them so much, but the wrapping. Um, <laughs> so annoying, though. It's so annoying. I don't want them to be good at what they do because they're such assholes. Um, so, uh, and Gemma, is there anything else you want to plug? Um, there's loads. There's loads going on. Just like follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Gem again on Instagram because it's me again. And um, Gem Ken on Twitter. There's lots. There's lots. I've got a series starting on New Year's Day on Six Music. Oh! oh wow. Fancy. called The Leisure Society and it's where I interview different iconic interesting people out of the studio and in a zone of their own so wow. Goldie in a hot yoga studio 
Tracy Emin in a shell grotto. Wow. Um, yeah, listen out for it on Six Music. I would like to plug Global Pillage at globalpillage.net. And also, if you would like to put something in our Christmas stocking, please uh, support our podcast by buying our episode on negotiations. It's five pounds. We don't do Patreon or advertising, so you are getting something for that. You're getting a really good episode on negotiations. But it's five pounds or whatever you would like to give us in whatever currency. Not whatever you'd like to give us, five pounds. Um, <laughs> don't, you know what, don't just give us 20p, because well, you won't get it. It won't happen. <laughs> Jen, would you please read that? Do you want right. to do it in a voice? Oh, what, in the voice of my mum? Yeah. Can okay. you do this in the voice of your mum? Okay, so it's just my favourite thing to listen to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to keep track of everything we're up to, you can follow Pod on Twitter or the Guilty Feminist on Instagram. My God. (laughs) It's long. There's also a Facebook page you can like me and a mailing list you can sign up to. (laughs) And if you like what you hear, please go. (laughs) Sorry. Please go to what we're now supposed to call Apple Podcasts and rate, review and subscribe. It helps other people to discover us. I give us five stars. Thank you very much, Chef Rostock. You have been listening to The Guilty Feminist with me, Deborah Francis White, guest co host Jen Brister, and our very special guests, Jim McKenney, Amica George, and Grace Campbell. The recording engineer was Chris Sharp, the music was by Mark Hodge, and the music was Tom Selinsky for the Spot and Edge Shop. Thanks to Zoe, Jacob, Sally, and everyone at King's Place, as well as all of you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com. Thank you, everyone. We've been the Guilty Feminists. Good night. We're not anti the Moon Cup, just to be clear. If you love totally. the Moon Cup, you love the Moon Cup. And I want lots of people to use the Moon Cup, just not me. Uh, I really do. I really do, because it's really right for some people. But like everything, women are not a monolithic group. If, if cis men got periods, they would have a variety of options. And we are allowed to have a variety of sustainable options. We don't all have to use the same moon cup, gang. Mm. And I well, do we should never literary. use the same moon cup anyway. <laughs> One moon cup. How would we get all of our cycles in sync? It would be a nightmare. Well, you-